Adam Collins, this is Damien Fleming, it's Crick Buzz Centre Stage on a very dreary day for Australian cricket. England passed the 223 all out that Australia made with 107 balls to spare Flem. Sometimes everything goes right for a side, it did for England today and the reverse was true for Australia. Yeah, that was uh, just a total dominance by England today. And the thing that they've threatened in the last three years and what we thought would happen through the World Cup, you know when you want to peak? Right at the pointy end. So it's not quite there. You're in business class, England. You're not first class yet, but I think they've got a bigger ceiling than New Zealand. So if they play to their potential, I think they're winning the World Cup. What about that first spell? Chris Wokes, Joffre Archer, they weren't unplayable, but gee, the zip they got off that track early on when it was still fresh, batsman error contributed to some of the downfalls for Australia. 14 for three early on, there was no way back. No, I just thought you get, you get the new ball um, in international cricket, you get the chance to set the tone. And besides Wokes getting cover driven first ball by Warner for four and thinking, hey, Dave's on today, I thought their planning were good. Finch, what do you want to do? You want to bowl full and straight early, LBs or bowl him through the gate, got the LBW uh, to Warner, um, short and get him to play away from his body and Pete Hanscom, you've got to attack that front pad and obviously it went through the gate and bowled him there. So I think the planning and the execution in that first spell with Archer and obviously Wokes and the captaincy of Morgan just set up the whole game. And then Smith and Carey came together and they put on a fantastic stand of 103. Yep. Smith, the former captain, made 85 before getting run out. Carey again was impressive. He didn't quite get to 50. He holed out. But the way they got things back together, England fans were nervous for a period there. We saw what happened at Manchester. A moderate total can be enough, but they didn't have the extra gear. Wickets fell in clumps. Stoinis, Maxwell, after Carey fell. There, there were just too many wickets in quick succession. Yeah, in some ways that partnership showed up the real weakness in this Australia's campaign, isn't it? Lack of middle order runs. Carey really enhanced his reputation batting at number seven, went up today, did a great job, courageous, got felled by a bouncer, mm. took a nice catch of his helmet, so he has got good hands. Um, but I think we're obviously a future test wicket keeper and potential captain. Mm. Stephen Smith, Smith and Warner were fantastic in this tournament. Um, you know, they're back in the fold. They're two of our greatest players. I thought Smith was, you know, he was the one, he showed his experience. And if they could have just gone another 10 overs, 280 might not have been enough, but Australia would have been in the, but in this game, but um, too often losing two wickets in an over, it was game over, wasn't it? Adil Rashid as well, I mentioned for him, his leg spin was crucial in getting two wickets in and over at that important time. Kerry followed by Stoinis, who had, he's had a terrible tournament. Yeah, but I mean, um, Rashid's been a genuine wicket taker, yeah. hasn't he, for England last three years. And their, their game plan coming into here has been scoring big and they'll bowl well enough with varieties. They're not economical bowlers, but they'll get enough wickets to make it ugly. But then you put Joffre Archer into their team. And I don't know if they could have gone on to get to the final without Archer, because he's a spearhead. Wickets with the new ball, can do it in the middle overs, and he, he closes out at the death um, overs there. Woke's very good as well, but Joffre Archer, they're icing on the cake, I think, for England's campaign. The reverse was true when Australia bowled, just not enough runs to play with. They couldn't take the early breakthroughs they needed, and Jason Roy was sublime. Yeah, I mean, Jason Roy missed three games uh, in the tournament with a hammy. They lost two of those. Yep. Comes back in, a couple of quick 60s and then a, an amazing 80 today. Bearstow enjoys batting with him. You know, that could be England's best ever one day opening partnership. And you can see Bearstow's happy just to accumulate a bit like what Warner does for Australia. And Roy, he's got rubber wrists, <laughs> isn't it? Some of his shot and the actual power he generates there is amazing. Um, him and Archer, I think, are the two most important players. And that's not downplaying um, Joe Root. He accumulates, he bats, he hits gaps, but he always scores it around a runner ball. So um, there's a reason why they've been dominant in the last three years. Um, there's, they've got a high ceiling runs-wise, and they're bowling. There's enough variety there to, to trouble all opposition. We'll have a lot more to say about England in a couple of days, but in terms yeah. of the overall post-mortem with Australia, have they met expectations? Had, they, had you given Australia a semi-final before the tournament, given the three years it's been, and especially the time since Sandpaper uh, felled Australian cricket last year, would have they taken it? Yeah, I mean, before this tournament, I got the semi-finals right. Um, I thought New Zealand probably wouldn't have made the, the final. So for Australia to get knocked out, if you told me that at the start of the tournament, I, I would have said, oh, that's about where we sit, I reckon. Yeah. If England and India are playing to their, their potential, um, 
But you'll have to look through how many people have enhanced their reputation. And I think, um, obviously, Alex Carey's the main one. Berendorf, to a degree. Um, Warner and Smith just um, verifying that they are great players. Um, Finch, very good, particularly when Warner plays there. But there's still a lot of question marks. Mm. In the, the questions we had, uh, number three, Usman was OK. Um, the all-rounder spot, Marcus Stoinis, was disappointing mainly with his runs. And, and potentially the spinner, I think Zampa was their number one, and he ended up outside the team. So there'll be four years to work it out again. Um, but overall, I would have thought um, that was around where Australia was, a semi-final position, and everything would have had to go right for him to make the final. A huge day for English cricket, a very disappointing one for Australia. But thank you to Damien Fleming for being part of the Crick Buzz Centre Stage team throughout the course of the tournament. We'll talk to you at Lords from the final.